All right, so that striker design that I was working on didn't work out. Um, I, I, I set up a test rig and you know pulled the pin and nothing happened. So all we're trying to do is see if the striker with the springs that I have in there will set off this primer. So that shell is in there. So one, and now we're ready to rock. So here goes, hoping we get a bang. No bang. Um, I think the problem there is there's just not enough mass on that firing pin to, to set off that primer. The springs are strong, um, they're really specialized, and there's not very much room inside of that T for it to, to get up a lot of speed and for me to also cram in my, my firing mechanism. Uh, or my, my trigger mechanism. Um, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss that idea. I'm gonna go with an adaptation of the original test firing pin design that I had. Um, so we had to reduce the uh, diameter down from a quarter inch down to an eighth so that there won't be escaping gases and, and all that jazz. That's why we had the, the bushing, the breech bushing uh, update last time. Um, so now I'm gonna use this, this uh, eighth inch rod is going to be the, the, the main firing pin. And then I'm going to have to have some kind of reducing. Uh, I'm thinking like a sleeve to, to fit over it. Um, but the good thing about that is you're going to be able to use different size bolts, different size springs. Um, and, and I think your options are going to open up a lot because ultimately that's all going to fit down in this pipe back here. Um, and you can, anything that'll fit inside that pipe, you could, you could really use for a spring and a bolt. Um, I do have some ideas for how to kind of standardize what the internals of this will look like. Um, I'm working on that. So the next thing to get into is how to actually cock this gun. Um, I've, I've kind of entertained the idea of, of how to do a double action, you know, uh, you know, trigger here, but I got nothing. Um, I don't have any ideas for how to get that actually working. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is uh, I have two competing ideas. One is to have some kind of lever here where you, you push down with your thumb and that actually actuates some sort of you know lever or rod and, and forces the firing pin back into, into firing position. So that's, I like that idea in that it's really um, elegant. It's really kind of a cool, elegant solution to that. Um, but it's going to be hard. I don't, know, I don't know how to do that off the top of my head. Um, and I haven't, I haven't had anything really come to me um, specifically on, on how I would do that and keep it, um, you know, that it has to be strong or, or, or light enough for your thumb to push, but strong enough, uh, you know, we got we to push back that whole, that whole firing pin with its spring, right? Um, so, I mean, we can, we can take some mechanical advantage and do that, but I'm not sure what that looks like inside of here at all right now. Um, so I have another idea that I think is much easier so the idea is we have this, we're gonna have a firing pin running down the, the tube here, um, and there's gonna be a spring, and there's some kind of plug to keep, to, to take up the slack, right? That's, that's really all it's there for, is to take up slack. Um, but what I'm thinking of doing is tying a string, basically, um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna use paracord, um, but hooking a string up to that firing pin so that we can run it down the back or at the top or whatever, um, but run that string down here, and you can pull that string to cock the gun. So that's a little bit um, creative, let's say. Um, but it is really, really easy. So I can, I can think of how to do that right now. I've also been working on my printer, which has caused me a lot of grief this last month. It's definitely unhappy. Um, so the good news is I do have a second set of uh, electronics. I broke the tab off the resistor that makes my hot end work. Um, the good news is that I had another printer that I'm working on over here. It had the electronics and the hot end for it, um, which happened to be an E3D V6, which, as far as I know, is the best hot end on the market right now. I've also been working on this other printer because if that machine goes down, I'm kind of dead in the water. Um, so I've been working on this other machine, that, which is a RepRap Morgan. So that was before I really had these problems with the printer. Um, and I'm wondering now if I should go for a, a little more of a, a beaten path, honestly, um, to get a second printer up and going and then, you know, maybe play around. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time um, getting, getting that machine up and going in a, a better state than it's in right now before I really dig into the Morgan. Um, 
and the liberator project, I'm going to be working on that uh, the cocking mechanism and um, putting the, the unknown cat's trigger um, back in there again. Um, with a few modifications. So um, that's it for now. Uh, sorry for taking so long. I've been busy. Printer's been down. I've been trying to trying to get you guys an update. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you're all uh, satisfied. Um, but anyway, stay tuned. Um, and if you have any questions or anything or any suggestions, um, you know, ideas for this little levery trigger thing um, or cocking mechanism thing, um, you know, send me send me some. Uh, some suggestions or diagrams or you know draw something out. Ever anything's helpful. Um, yeah, thanks.